Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are making a jack-o'-lantern that goes on the top of a battery operated candle tea light and they glow and I absolutely love them. I made quite a few of them. I made one of them, this one here, where he's eating another baby pumpkin and his guts are hanging out. Then a couple that don't fit on the tea light because I just wanted a couple of small ones. And this one here, he's my favourite, I like him. And then Fred. So please like, comment and subscribe to my channel because I will be making a lot more of these in the future and the month of September is dedicated to Halloween even though we don't celebrate it in Australia, everyone else does. So you start with a ball of orange and yellow clay, about the same, same amount and you roll them flat, roll the orange one thinner, then you roll the yellow one and then you place the yellow one on top of the orange one then you grab your big marble and you place them both, wrapping it around it and making it into a pumpkin shape, covering the whole of the marble and then just moulding it into the shape that you want. Then you grab your dotting tool and make the indentations down along the side of the pumpkin that a real pumpkin or, or jack-o'-lantern has. I have this scrubbing tool brush that it looks like a scrubbing brush that I use to texture things, uh, or you could use a ball of alfoil or anything else that, has, that will make a texture similar to a pumpkin or a cake. I find the alfoil works a little better, and makes chunks, than the scrubbing tool does. Then I used the dotting tool to make scratches along the skin of the pumpkin because during its life it would have got scratched and roughed up a little bit. I got these battery operated tea candle lights from the cheap shop, $2.99. That's, that's here in Australia anyway. And they were perfect for what I wanted. They're going to go on the bottom of the jack-o'-lantern. Uh, you pull the little thingy out to make it work and then you make a hole in the bottom of the jack-o'-lantern to make sure it fits over the widest part of just the light it doesn't need to go over the base just the light once you've got it to the right size make sure you texture it it's not necessary on the bottom bit but i just wanted to do this to make it look good then i redo the lines because I was playing with it so squash it down a little bit. Wanted to make the top flat. Now I use some brown sculpey to make the little stem. You just roll it into like a little snake and the bottom is thicker than the top and you place it on top and then you just use whatever tool you have or you like to mold it into the top of the pumpkin. And then you make the lines and texture the top of the stem because it's not going to be completely smooth it's a stem so yeah do whatever you want here it can be bottom can be green because some of them are green it can be any color you want then you just make a little holy circly thing in the top of the stem and you're done Being Australian, I've never made a jack-o'-lantern, but you see them with this little circle bit cut out. I presume it's where you scoop the guts of the pumpkin out, so that's what I did. And then you texture it with your dotting tool. And here comes the fun bit. You can make any design for the face. I just looked on um, Google and Googled images of pumpkin faces, and then I just cut it out. 
cut out the eyes and then the nose and then the mouth in, in any way you want. And yes, texturing with the dotting tool, it's a must. You've got to learn to do it. You've got to do it a lot when you're making miniatures and when you're doing polymer clay. Just part of life. Just cutting out the triangle nose here and then I texture it with the knife because I like the chunky way that it looked. And the next bit will be cutting out its mouth and then texturing it. And here he is, I'm going to call him Fred. He's looking a little rough. He needs some more texturing and his lines across down the side to be redone and more texturing in the mouth. And yeah, just keep going until you're happy. It's your pumpkin, your jack-o'-lantern, whatever they're called. And just make it yours. I tried many different ways of making pumpkins and keeping the shape. And this was the way that I liked the best. Um, Unbaked at the moment, he's unbaked. You cut down, you cut him in half basically, so that you can get him off the marble after he's baked, and then you glue him back together and um, put him back in the oven. But this was the way that I liked, so I just I'm loosening it here a little bit just so he's easier to get off, and then retexturing, of course. There are many other ways of doing it. Um, yeah, this is the way I like. I squished his mouth a little bit, so just reopening that. Just make sure everything is how you want it to be before you bake it. And yeah, he's done. Fred. He's all happy. Now put him in the oven for however long you uh, need to. And when he's dry, um, cool, sorry, when he's cool. Don't do this when he's hot because he will crack. Trust me, I know. You get your knife and you go back down the lines where you cut it in half before you baked it and you just wiggle the knife just a little bit and then it should just pop off just be careful though because it may it may break so make sure it's completely cool it's the best time to do it then you get your Sculpey uh, I use bacon bond yep there it is there and just put it on the sides and I, I hate it when it gets too thick because this stuff it doesn't it doesn't really, it bakes clear, but you can still see it. So I try to hide it where it is, try not to have it like gooped everywhere. So you smooth it down and you make sure it's all good. And then you put it back in the oven for about 20 minutes and Bob's your uncle. Uh, when he was completely cooled and after baking I got some raw umber paint and watered it down a fair bit and just put little bits around him to make it look a little bit dirty because he'd be dirty. Make your friend, you're a dirty boy. Yeah. He looks good. Looks awesome actually. I really like the way he turned out. And there's Fred Rieta and they're, they're really good friends. They, they like each other. And, Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I love you. Oh. Anyway, I'm really happy with how that turned out. And the next one I'll be showing you is just a quick version of the small pumpkin. It's exactly the same technique, except I used a smaller marble, obviously. Uh, the orange and the yellow clay that's been flattened and you roll it around into over the marble. And then you cut the base out and then you make the indentations into these sides to make it look like a pumpkin and the brown clay to make the stem and then you push it into the top to make it stick and make all the little scratches in it and use a dotting tool whatever tool you need to i turned it around twisted it so it looked like a little dog poop i actually like the way it turned out then you cut the circle out the top so well you can scoop the guts out texture it Texture both, and then you cut that the little face. Now, doing the smaller pumpkin, it's a little harder to cut the face out, but just do your best. You can use the um, dotting tool too. I, I use that with a couple of mine, and it works good. Then I cut it in half and baked it, and then glued it with Sculpey Bacon Bond and. 
baked it again. Now this pumpkin I decided to do on a whim. It was one of the um, ones I saw on Google where there's a pumpkin eating a, a baby pumpkin. And so I copied the face there, one side of the face, smile is uh, bigger, like that. And then you make, sh you cut out teeny tiny little bits to make the teeth and then use the dotting tool to reinforce the edges of the teeth there. That's where he's going to be eating the little baby screaming pumpkin. And then he's got two little triangle nose shapes and his eyes as well. He just, I just cut them out with the dotting tool because it was just much easier. I decided to give him teeth on the bottom too. And of course you start him the same way as you start the other ones with the clay around the big marble and then the lines. And I textured him last, I think. Cut him in half and now I texture him. And then after I texture him and fixed everything up and he's how I want him to be, I bake him. Yep, he's hungry. For his little baby pumpkin victim, you don't need to have the yellow inside, it's just a circle of orange clay, then you do the indentations, and you do the best you can with this one, because it's very hard to get it absolutely perfect, because he's so small. I made holes for the eyes and a screaming mouth, and I pulled a little um, chunk off the side to make it look like he'd had a bite taken out of him. And I actually made the hole for the eyes go right the way through, because I wanted the glow from the pumpkin when he goes under the candle to glow through the little baby pumpkin. Yep, there he is. Ah! Now if you want to make some pumpkin guts, you get a little bit of orange clay and Sculpey TLS. That's it there. Very old container. And it comes out very slowly. I tell you, you could wait there for an hour for a little teeny tiny bit to come out. And you mix it together with the orange clay and then you get some orange pastel to make it a little bit more brighter orange because it wasn't quite orange enough. You want it to be relatively thick because of all the pictures I've seen of pumpkin guts, they're relatively thick. Then I got some translucent clay and made teeny tiny little ovals and, uh, and squashed them down to make pumpkin seeds to mix into the pumpkin guts to make it look more realistic. I baked the seeds and then placed them on top of the pumpkin guts and then I baked them again together and then I put Sculpey Gloss on the top of it and put the guts near the pumpkin that's being eaten by the big monster daddy pumpkin. If you also want to have some of these stringy bits that you see in the pumpkin guts, just get some orange clay, roll it out to a snake and then put it in and then and then bake it along with the seeds. Then you get your Sculpey Bacon Bond and you put the baby pumpkin into the monster pumpkin's mouth. And make sure you don't get the Bacon Bond absolutely everywhere because it just, it, it just looks like glue when you have it everywhere. And this is before he was baked. So he's got Sculpey Bacon Bond on him. Then you place them in the oven and he's done. 